Hello and welcome to Sound Library. I'm Stefan Schutz. I'm going to talk about a Japanese game today. It's fairly recent. Um, PlayStation 3 I think was the first release. And it's the first of the Valkyrie Chronicles series, so Valkyrie Chronicles. Um, I saw this game actually at the Tokyo Game Show uh, quite a bit before it was released. I didn't really get to see much of the game. I was watching somebody else play it. And it instantly caught my eye because it's just very, very beautiful to look at. Um, beautiful sort of uh, hand-painted anime style. I'm not a huge fan of the way a lot of Japanese games are made for, for various reasons, but I thought I'd give this one a try because of the way it looked. Now, I have to say it has a lot of the very familiar aspects of uh, Japanese games telling very, very big stories, very epic stories with lots of characters. And that's great. I don't have an issue with that at all. It did, however, have one particular aspect of the sound that I just really, really loved. And to my knowledge, this is the, well, it's the only game I've ever come across where I've been able to play the game in the original Japanese language with English subtitles. And I really, really enjoyed playing this game in that way. In the same way that I will usually watch most films that are not in English in their native language, because I think that's the way they should be experienced. So Valkyrie Chronicles has um, a lot of the elements that you'd expect, lots of dialogue, uh, big sweeping uh, musical score, and not a lot in the way of sound effects. And this is actually quite a common thing for the way Japanese create the audio for their games. So let's have a closer look at Valkyrie Chronicles and see exactly what they've done and see why perhaps it's relevant. So I don't often just play through the introductory sequence when we do these analysis. Often I try to show some in-game footage, at least initially. One of the reasons why I've started this particular analysis by showing this opening introduction is because this typifies in so many ways the Japanese approach to making video games. I won't put a judgment value on it just yet, but the Japanese really in a lot of ways, many, many of their games are more like interactive films. Now, I find this interesting because it's really only been fairly recently in Western games that we've, we've started to laud the introduction of really story-driven games. Previously, most Western games have been very, very much focused on just running around, shooting things, driving cars, etc. And it's only been in the last few years that we've had really, really strong story games in the West. Japanese games have had very strong story elements for a long, long time. But it could be argued, and personally, I think I feel this way, that I think they possibly take it a little bit too far. Now, I've started the game here, but I've actually also just cut out a chunk of introduction that's about 10 minutes long. Now here is where we get to why I have included Valkyrie Chronicles in the 101 video games you must listen to before you die. This is the first game that I discovered. I'm not necessarily saying it was the first game, but it's the first game that I've discovered that I could play in the original Japanese language with English subtitles. Now, to me, 
That is how every game from a foreign language should be played. It should always be played in its native language with subtitles. And I feel that way about films and television as well. Now, I appreciate and I understand fully that some people will say, oh, I don't want to have to read a game, etc. But there is so much more impact for me hearing this game in the language that it was created in. This is the vision that the designers had. They created this game with these voice actors, with this script in Japanese. And I would much prefer to experience it in this language. Now, as you can see, uh, even though I've cut out about uh, a 10 minute introduction of the, the what's going on in the world, etc., we are still, we've gone from our long introductory cinematic, which was marvellous, to a story introduction bit that we're now seeing. And this, even this continues on for some time before we actually get to gameplay. Now, for me personally, I find this probably a little bit too much in the direction of storytelling over gameplay. My observation is that the Japanese approach to developing games seems to be we are making a story, a cinematic story. In fact, we're, we're practically making an anime in this particular case. And every now and again, we'll pause the storytelling to let you do something. And that to me feels a little bit like the, the, the scales have tipped too much in the other direction. So let's talk specifically about some of the audio for Valkyrie Chronicles. The other reason why I started with the introductory uh, cinematic is because, frankly, it is just stunning. It has one of the most beautiful introductory music themes I've heard in any game. Visually, it looks gorgeous. The music, the beautiful musical score carries all the way through the entire game. And this visual style carries all the way through even when you're playing. So this is an example of where there is actually not a lot of difference between the storytelling elements and the gameplay elements from the point of view of the sound design, the music, the dialogue, and of course the visual qualities. So this is a good example of a game that's, that's carried itself through very, very nicely as far as the standard of quality all the way through. It does tend to uh, suffer from another cultural difference that I've noticed with Japanese games. Japanese games, for the longest time, have had really, really evocative and beautifully produced uh, musical soundtracks. All the way back to the final, the earlier Final Fantasy series, even when they were done with simple uh, chiptunes technology, they were still very, very complex musically and had themes for all the different characters and lots of stuff going on. This game is no different. There is a beautiful musical score that carries through the whole thing. And, as you can see here, there is quite a lot of dialogue because they're telling a story. However, one of the things that the Japanese seem to place less importance on is the quality of the sound design. And there is a reason for this that I've had explained to me, which I'll get into in a, in a minute. Japanese games tend to have amazing music more often than not and will have a lot of dialogue for the story. And they seem to place such importance on these that the sound design gets brought down in priority to the point where quite often your environments and your spot sounds uh, and even some of your important sound effects seem to be really, really rather basic. I've actually had this explained to me because for the longest time I wondered why this was the case. And I actually find the explanation uh, completely satisfactory from, from a cultural point of view of the cultural difference between Western games and Japanese games. In Japan, many voice actors who work in the games industry achieve huge status as far as, um, I guess, stardom. They're, they're like rock stars. People love particular voice actors. They will buy a game because a particular voice actor is involved with it. 
because of this, the writers of the games want to give those voice actors as much as they possibly can to say. And this also illustrates one of the other things that I've noticed about Japanese games is that quite often they've got incredibly verbose dialogue. The, the, the dialogue just goes on and on and on and on. And you're like, okay, if this was a Western game, this entire story would have been gotten through with, with two sentences and we'd be back into the action. So here we've finally gotten into our first little bit of, of gameplay. And this is uh, functioning as a tutorial, which is completely fine. But it's been, I'd say by the time I got into this in the real game, it's been probably 30 minutes before I've got to actually do anything. And in this particular case, it goes through very slowly and carefully what you have to do. And, and that's all fine. But as I said, I'm more used to a Western approach, especially the more modern Western approach, where you're pretty much dumped straight into the game. The tutorial takes place as part of the story. The story takes place during gameplay. You're not detached one from the other. Whereas there is still a common occurrence of Japanese games handing you out portions like a, a banquet. Here is your little portion of story. Here is your little portion of gameplay. And they, they divide them up. So when we actually get into the game here, we get back into a very, very traditional Japanese style of game design. We have our piece of music that's accompanying us, but actually the musical accompaniment for this particular bit is a fairly standard little action track. You know, it's higher in tempo and, and action than what we've had previously. But if you listen to it, it's only about eight, 16 bars long and then it repeats. And I find it really interesting that a game that has got to this much trouble to have um, a huge orchestral score and lots and lots of cutscenes and beautiful artwork reverts back to this very, very old school, almost, you know, early console thing of, oh, we don't have enough memory, therefore we're going to have uh, 16 bars of music, fully orchestral as it is, that just plays over and over and over again in loops. So it's an interesting contrast that we've got such high production standards for the storytelling elements, and yet the gameplay elements just seem to fall back on the, the very old school. We've got a handful of sounds. We've got a handful of, of uh, dialogue things of, of your characters going, ouch, or let's go get them or whatever, and um, the, the looping music element. It's almost like where you're actually playing the game have not really evolved much in 20 years of Japanese game development. And yet, as we saw, the storytelling elements are getting better and better and the production qualities are getting higher and higher. Overall, I've enjoyed this game experience. It's, it's stunning to look at. And the music and the cutscenes are wonderful. And as I said right at the beginning, the fact that I can play this in the original Japanese language really, really makes this far more immersive for me because it really does make me feel like I am playing an anime story because that's how I watch my anime stories. So I have to admit, I haven't actually finished playing Valkyrie Chronicles yet. Um, like a lot of games, they're, they're very long. I don't have the time to get through them. 
I would actually like to, but in some ways I, I may almost go back to the beginning to try and get the whole story again. So there's certainly no shortage of story going on here. And the audio, especially the musical score, does have a very good job of supporting that. Whether it's a triple A game or not, well, these days it's kind of hard to define what a triple A game is, but it definitely has aspects of the audio that I really think are worth considering from the point of view of understanding different approaches to game audio. So it's only available on the PlayStation 3, but if you have an opportunity to have a look at it, I would recommend it because it is a very beautiful game to have a look at. Thank you very much for watching.